I'm moving on now as I'm uh, drawing to a close of issues, but obviously mitigation that I've touched on uh, is, uh, is particularly important. Uh, these ideas um, will only be effective if you have underpinning them appropriate mit mitigation strategies because without those strategies it is going to be uh, difficult to obtain insurance in the first place, uh, let alone the fact that I've, I've shown by reference to those flood levies uh, that mitigation measures are unquestionably, uh, are, are unquestionably effective as, as is uh, uh, obviously the case in the area of bushfire management that uh, Na Naomi uh, is an expert in. But as I suggested earlier, I believe that some of the greatest gains are to be made uh, in this area, that is the area of prevention and preparedness. Uh, and as I've noted, there is a growing body of evidence on the cost effectiveness of mitiga mitigation. It's generally accepted in the emergency management community that $1 spent on mitigation can save at least $2 in recovery costs, and I believe that's an underestimate. Figures from overseas experience, particularly the United Kingdom, have indicated that as much as eight recovery dollars may be saved for every one mitigation dollar. The Commonwealth spe currently spends um, around $26 million each year to states and territories for disaster mitigation works and for supporting emergency management volunteers through the Natural Disaster Res Resilience Program. We also fund uh, some additional measures such as uh, our contribution to the National Area Aerial Firefighting Arrangements, uh, to maintaining the National Emergency uh, Warning System and so forth. But I would like you to, con to, um, uh, to compare uh, that, that funding and uh, while it is valuable funding and recognised by the states uh, which match that funding in their own jurisdictions to help, uh, to help put in place a range of mitigation strategies, whether they be in respect to flood levies, uh, fire trails, um, to command and control centres, to enhancing volunteers and those sort of measures, uh, incredibly valuable measures. I ask you to cross compare the amount that governments collectively are spending in the mitigation area with those figures I mentioned earlier, $776 million by way of individual payments that have been made in the last season, natural disaster season alone. And uh, as a community, uh, we need to, and local members, I can tell you, every time there is a natural disaster, I have a knock on my door uh, from the local member representing and appropriately representing the interests of their community as to what their constituents should be entitled to as against previous benchmarks. So each, each event uh, as except, noted as exceptional, uh, starting with um, indeed um, the, the former government uh, events in South Australia was the basis for the model adopted in Cyclone Yasi, Cyclone Yasi, a uh, Cyclone Larry rather. Cyclone Larry then became the benchmark for other events, uh, and that that benchmark, uh, irrespective of it being designated as being of a significant event, having a significant impact on the national or a regional community, I can assure you each time becomes the benchmark. So I have knocking on my door members representing the interests appropriately of their local constituents saying where's the money, where's the individual payments, whereas we should be sitting down collectively as representatives of our local community saying how can we best organise a structure that in the future protects the safety of our communities to prevent them suffering the injury, loss and devastation in the first place and we haven't got to that mindset yet. This is a mindset that we need to communicate through the broader community, certainly through elected representatives. Uh, the, 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 um, there is an understandable desire to show empathy, and appropriately so, to the victims of natural disasters, and empathy and assistance should be pro provided, but at all stages we need to recognise that resources in any community are finite, and we need to plan, we need to organise and we need to allocate sufficient resources to preventative measures and they are not being all sufficiently allocated in the community at present. There is no question about that. Uh, so in conclusion, 
having uh, made that uh, statement, but it is a particularly important statement um, because natural disasters uh, are inevitable. Uh, they have occurred, they will, in, uh, will occur on the basis of expert advice. They are likely to be far more intense if we continue as a community um, focusing on, um, on response uh, rather than uh, prevention, uh, then we will end up with a, in a situation where we will inevitably over time uh, and, uh, and um, uh, inevitably over time uh, as it builds on and builds on events, uh, impose a significant, uh, significant financial uh, imposition on our country, which imposition uh, will in turn impede our ability uh, to uh, uh, do what we can to mitigate against, prevent and prepare for uh, these disasters. So in summary, natural disasters are an inevitable part of our experience as a nation. They are an inevitable experience of mankind. That is why they are called natural, as distressing as they are. As I said earlier, the foundations of our national emergency management arrangements remain strong, but events of the last few months in particular compel us to re-examine how we prepare for and manage emergencies, to look closely at the lessons learned from this and previous years uh, and what they mean for the future. We can take effective practical steps to limit the impact of disasters on people, uh, to, build, uh, to, uh, uh, to build environment, uh, so the, uh, the consciousness of environment uh, and safety in responding to those natural disasters uh, in our environment uh, and uh, as part of our uh, economic um, development. In addition to the traditional approaches focused on uh, by the role of our emergency services who are in themselves world class uh, in their expertise and that is confirmed time and time again. Uh, but to build upon their expertise to make our community itself an expert and resilient community uh, is the challenge we have. Uh, this shift in thinking has been underway uh, since, um, certainly uh, uh, since uh, I, I have uh, been responsible for emergency management, but even among emergency responders prior to that time, uh, and certainly it is very much the philosophy of the government and our agencies, including Emergency Management Australia, who is represented here today. Uh, and that has come to a significant point in time where all governments of Australia recognise that to properly prepare for, uh, to prevent and to mitigate, mitigate against disasters, we need a whole of government response. This has been a significant development this year with Australian governments uh, all signing up to the National Strategy for Disaster res Resilience uh, to which I've recurred. But we do see models, we do see models particularly in the counter-terrorism area which are unquestionably uh, world's best practice. In Australia uh, we do, we are exposed to uh, more than our fair share of natural disasters. They are an inevitable part of our life, our culture, our history. They have been referred to uh, legendary in legendary terms in uh, our poetry uh, and in terms of the uh, the culture that we have developed of looking after each other, the culture of a volunteerism, but given what we have confronted, given what we are inevitably going to confront, uh, there is no doubt that we can lift our game in this area. I, uh, I welcome the contribution of ASPE, I reckon the, welcome the contribution of experts around the room, I welcome the fact that governments around Australia are also acknowledging this fact, but there is some little way yet to go. Uh, to uh, get that culture of resilience, get that policy focus on resilience and focus on those very, very important issues of prevention and preparedness. So thank you for your time.